Hi, I'm very excited to announce a new series of videos called Paper Merge for DevOps. I'll get into that in a second, <laughs> but uh, first one short announcement. So Paper Merge 2.1 is very close to beta phase. I would say in a maximum two weeks, I will release first beta version. Beta phase means that 2.1 is feature complete, but likely to contain several uh, <laughs> known or unknown bugs. I'm looking forward on your feedback for that. Paper merge for DevOps. Nowadays, the standard way to deploy any web application is by using Docker. Software engineer or developer ships the application as a Docker container and then the DevOps engineer deploys Docker image or Docker images in some sort of container orchestrator. Container orchestrator is basically a tool which manages containers. Maybe you're already familiar with at least two very popular orchestrators, Docker Compose and Kubernetes. In this video series, I'll start by briefly explaining the moving parts of Paper Merge, how they're shipped in containers, and how those containers relate to each other. Once we understood the basics, we'll continue with Docker Compose. I'll explain how to use Docker Compose to set up different scenarios, and in case something goes wrong, I'll show you how to troubleshoot. The final part of this series focuses on Kubernetes. I'll go over the basics of Kubernetes, which is a huge tool, and then I'll show you how to deploy and operate Paper Merge in Kubernetes environment. Let's start. In order to deploy and operate Paper Merge, you need to understand its different parts. Let's start with the first piece of the puzzle, frontend. When you think of web application, the first thing that may come to your mind is user interface, buttons, login screens, menus, and so on and so forth. This part or piece is called frontend. So frontend is this shiny, beautiful, friendly user interface. What is not obvious at all, actually it is counterintuitive, is that user interface alone, the frontend, is a separate application. Yes. Frontend, user interface, is a separate application. You can start or stop frontend completely independent of other parts of Paper Merge. Let me show you. So Docker uh, images are published in two places. One is GitHub or GitHub Container Registry and another one is Docker Hub. So here in GitHub packages, Uh, you need to go to papermerge.js, which is the um, which is the place where frontend Docker images are published. So let me click now on git on uh, papermerge.js. And here you see the commands to run uh, to start uh, frontend. So similarly in uh, Docker Hub just search papermerge.js and here you can see tags you can search for the latest tag which is uh, a39 at this moment and here's the command to run docker container for frontend the p flag actually maps the ports the local port 9000 to 80 which is internal let me copy URL and start it. And now uh, frontend is up and running. Notice the port here. The port 9000 is the local one. So I need to go to the browser and look for lo localhost 9000. And uh, this is the um, frontend, which is without well, backend is useless. And as you can see now, And if I'll sign in right now, I'll get this uh, very unfriendly error, which basically means um, that uh, something is wrong with the backend. 
at this point the backend is entirely missing so um, even though it says like 405 not allowed basically the problem is that uh, frontend is not there i'll get later to why exactly it tries to post on this url and how to sort of connect frontend and uh, backend this will be in a later video and now if i do docker ps you will see only one uh, docker container rain running uh, this is the um, frontend docker container on it is the image and the uh, what's important to know to know actually and to have in mind the ports in the ports the local one is 9000 which is mapped to internal one to 80. this situation is similar to a having a beautiful shiny car without engine wheels and keys so Without engine, wheels and keys, you cannot enter the car, let it alone to drive it. To make the front end useful, we need to connect it to the backend part. Backend is the application itself. Or if I stick with the car example, backend is the engine, the wheels and the keys of the car. You don't see the engine, but without it, the car is useless. Front end and backend communicate with each other via so-called REST API. REST API is a fancy term for HTTP where HTTP messages have JSON data in their body. The crucially important point here which I want to make is that the backend is the PaperMesh document management system. Frontend on the other hand is just a nice, beautiful and very useful part, but it is entirely optional. So far I've used the term part, like backend part, frontend part. Actually the correct terminology is service so front-end is optional service while back-end service is the application itself you interact with back-end service with help of rest api splitting application into back-end and front-end is in line with modern trends of designing web applications as microservices <laughs> yes yet another modern term for back-end front-end parts is microservice and now that we clarified the back and front end distinction, let's play a little bit with back and docker container and see what in the box. Here on documentation site, uh, setup docker, you can see the very basic command to start the back end. Let me copy paste it to the terminal and start it. And if I go to localhost port 8000, I will see nothing. As I mentioned previously, the backend does not provide any user interface. One way to check that backend is um, up and running is by accessing uh, reference documentation with, uh, which is served by backend. Let me show you how to do that. So here in documentation, uh, REST API reference you'll find this nice you'll find this URL um, so API schema read doc let me copy it and paste it or sort of add it to the end of the um, base URL and this is nice and this is REST API reference here you have documented all endpoints now, for example, if I try to access this endpoint, yeah, I'll get nothing. Problem here is that I need to use method POST. Uh, let me find the correct command uh, for authenticate in documentation. So here in overview uh, section, I have the full command. Let me copy paste it and then I'll adjust it quickly. So default user which comes uh, uh, hard-coded so to speak and the backend is the admin and the password is the one which we provided uh, when we started uh, docker container is this one one two three so let me replace the word here with one two three and voila we have rest api token uh, if i run docker ps you will see one single container up and running which is the backend service And the thing is, by default, uh, backend uses um, the backend service uses uh, SQLite as a database. 
So I'll use docker exec command. I'll copy this docker container ID and then the bin bash. Okay, I'm inside and, and here you can see uh, db.sqlite free, which is a file where all SQLite data is stored. A few takeaway points. First, front-end is optional. Second, back-end is mostly configured via environment variables. And third takeaway point is that by default, uh, back-end uses SQLite database. Although you can start backend very easily with one simple command and use it without UI. To be honest, I find it boring to use a backend without user interface. In the next video, I will show you how to sort of connect backend and frontend with help of uh, Docker Compose. Docker Compose is not enough to connect the two. And I'll show you why. Besides Docker Compose, I'll introduce traffic, which is a fantastic proxy, as you'll see. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.